Hello, and welcome to the world of Infinite Santa 8000. I'm head animator, Michael Neal. Today, we'll talk about basic motion. It may seem simple, but it's the foundation of everything we do in animation. Everything starts here. So we'll begin with scene 15 to 23 from the Infinite Santa movie, The Bunny Chase. All right, welcome to the first tutorial on basic motion. So first, I want to show you a clip from the Infinite Santa movie. The evil Easter Bunny has kidnapped Martha, which is Santa's somewhat daughter, Cyborg, and the evil Easter Bunny is flying away. Santa is going to chase her in his sleigh. So we'll watch the clip. Don't even think about it, little girl. Your fat friend doesn't stand a chance against me. He's not the only one with holiday powers. Bring out the sleigh to the front of the team, Randolph! Reindeer power! Yeah! Off, off you, reindeer! Dash away, dash away, dash away all! Okay, so now I'm going to show you how we put together one shot from that clip. So we'll watch the quick time right now. Now I'd like to show you how we create this specific shot in After Effects. Now before we go on, I just want to make a note that I'm going to walk you through how this shot works and the basic motion Along the way, there are going to be a couple things that I'll reference that I'll show you briefly, but I'm not going to go into detail right now. And I'll show you more later in future tutorials. So first off, here's the basic layout. You have your project window here, and this is where you put all of your files that you're going to use. So here's composition windows, and here is all your art, Photoshop documents, I'm going to assume that you know the basics of what these mean. If you don't, please just read a tutorial on After Effects. It's one of the first things they cover, and then you can, you can move on to this. So here's a project. Now this is the timeline, and this is where all of your layers are that you'll use for your animation. And the order in which they're listed is important because everything that's up at the top is on top, and everything that is on the bottom, there's all these layers here. I'll scroll down and down and down and down and down. Each one of these is underneath the top layers. Now there are exceptions to this, but generally speaking, this is how everything is laid out, and this is how we lay out things in After Effects. All of these layers and how you animate them, they all show up together in your composition window up here. This is what your shot actually looks like. So these, this window and this window are working together. This over here is your preview window and this is what you use to watch what you're doing. Now you'll notice that the resolution here is not nearly as crisp as the clip that we showed before. That's because this is shown at quarter resolution. I'll put it up to full to show you what it actually looks like in the shot. Right, so there it is. And a lot of animation has to do with making small changes, watching them with the preview here, and then making more changes. Now the preview shows After Effects actually making your animation. So if there's a lot going on, it can take a while. So I'll press the preview button. Now this green bar shows up to show you all the frames that have already been drawn. A bunch up here had already been drawn and then it got to this section where it hadn't. And then it jumps ahead to these frames here. And as you can notice, this takes a while, a long time. And if I press this button again, it'll play just the green frames that are drawn here, these ones right here. OK, so I'll stop it by just clicking up on the bar. So what we do is we set the resolution lower. You can put it at half. You'll notice that each time I lower the resolution, you lose detail and it becomes more pixelated. But this is just, here's third, here's quarter. This is just the way it looks. There's, on the preview, it doesn't change your final resolution at all. 
Moving on, I want to show you how the layers are actually set up in here. So up at the top we have lights. Now this is something that I'm just going to mention here and then I'll move on. We cover this in future tutorials and these there's a lot more to these than than normal layers. They behave in very different ways. So I'll just show you though, I'll turn them off and you can see how what the effect is to the art here. There's that one, that one we haven't seen yet that doesn't show up at this part of the timeline because it doesn't start till here. Let's see, on and then off. And then there is this light here that affects the entire sleigh on the bottom half and then this one here is just for the little flames on the, on the bottom. So this is what the layer actually looks like from what we made. We use the lights to try to give the shot a different look. In this case, a blue look of nighttime. And everything we do has lights on it for the most part. Okay, so next up here is Santa's sleigh and I'm going to use the solo button here to show just the sleigh. Now this is another way of speeding up your previewing when you're trying to see what you're doing. You can also toggle the transparency grid here, which will show you, give you a better idea of what your art actually looks like. This is, you can see through this because this movie has what's called an alpha channel, which means that when you make your movie, anything that doesn't have art on it becomes transparent so you can see through it. This is pretty critical to creating the kind of animation we do, and I'd imagine for the kind of animation you're going to do as well. If you have questions about how this works, just refer to tutorials for either Photoshop or After Effects. It, it's all basically the same idea. So we have the sleigh here, and I'll, un, I'll deselect the solo layer. I'll turn back on the black, it's easier to see. And I'll turn off Santa, and here are all the clouds underneath. And there's lots of them. And we basically have two set setups. I'll turn these ones off. We have the clouds that come by in the foreground at very quick speed just to make it seem like it's going very fast. And then we have the ones here that fill up the background that I showed that just are a way of making making the shot have some depth to it and just making sure that there's a lot going on. So that's the basic setup. What I'm going to do now is look at just the sleigh profile itself because this has the movement properties that I'm going to be showing you. I'm going to use the shy switch. Now Right here, you'll see a picture. It's a little small, but it looks like a man hiding behind a wall. But if you click it, it looks like he's ducking down. Now, the reason you do this is because I just want to work on the sleigh now. I don't want to work on all these other layers, 103 of them. I want to hide them, but I don't want to change my work on them. So I've turned the switch on for all of them. And then I can go up here and when you click this it hides all the layers for which the shy switch is set so I'll do that and now this is much easier to work with I've also left up this layer null 4 now a null is an invisible layer that lets us do different kinds of things in animation I'm not going to show you what it is now but I've left it up because I will be showing you some keystrokes and shortcuts that you can use to access these different properties so I'm going to show you the properties for animation the basic ones that we've used for the profile. So, first off, before you start anything, this is critically important. Every layer must have this box checked. This is the 3D layer box. It allows this layer to be manipulated in three dimensions. I'll hit the shy layer again. You'll see that every layer down here has the 3D up. So there's two reasons for this. The biggest is that it gives you more options here for transform when you're trying to animate. And the second is that if you are going to light your layers, then they have to be 3D or the lights won't, won't work on them. We'll go over the lighting in future tutorials and you'll see exactly how that works. So here are the most important properties for working in After Effects. There's the anchor point, and this is the point around which everything animates. So let me solo this so you can see it better. So that's the dot right here. And you can see if I slide it back and forth, that's where everything is going to change from. I'll give another example of that in a minute. So you can also select that just by hitting A on your keyboard. 
and it'll select it. Well, if you don't have any, any layers selected, every layer will come up. But if you just have one layer selected and hit A, it'll just bring up the A for that layer. But now I'll bring up all the properties again. So for position, the position is just what it sounds like. The position manipulates your layer left to right and up and down. And it can also go back and forth in a 3D space, essentially towards the camera and away from the camera. That's not something I use very much. So you can see here that there are keyframes we've set to have it change over time. Now a keyframe is pretty straightforward and this is the foundation of all animation. We set values at the beginning and end of the movement. So in this case you can see here that the position is set here at a keyframe here and then I'll zoom out here you can see where it ends. And then here there's a little dot um, right here you can see it. You can see the dot. And that's the ending keyframe. That's this one right here. You can see that it lights up when I select it. And that's where the layer is going to go. Now, the keyframes are important because, as you can see, I've set this one at the beginning and this one at the end. And the computer draws every point in between. This saves tons of time. If we had to go in and do every single keyframe at once, individually it would take forever. Generally speaking, you want to do as few keyframes as possible because things can start to look weird if you start to overdo it. So moving on, you can see the position which we just went over, which is what it sounds like. The position moves slightly here. It's a little subtle and it's hard to... It basically just means that when the sleigh shrinks, it goes to where we want it to. And speaking of shrinking, we achieve that with the scale, which is exactly what it sounds like. We'll go to the first keyframe here, and you can see that the value is 100. That's 100%. When you're working with Photoshop and you're working with movies, then you don't want to go over 100% because things start to get pixelated. Here, I'll show you. So I'll grab this value here, and I'll move to the right to bring it up, or left to bring it down. I'll bring it all the way up, and I'll go to full resolution and you can see, well, it's a little hard to see. Let me go keep going up. That things will start to get pixelated right in there. And that's not something you want ever. So in this case, you can see that we set scale here at 100, and then it shrinks to 35 to make it seem like Santa's sleigh is flying into the distance. So moving on, I want to show you now orientation and rotation. And oh, by the way, too, if you want to bring up just position, you can do P. And you can do S for just scale. So I'll go back and show you all the transform properties again. Now orientation and XYZ rotation work together. And I like to keep them separate, and I'll show you why. So in this case, we have the orientation here set to 7. This is what makes it appear that Santa's flying up. So let's say we wanted to animate the sleigh turning in space. Now, once I set the orientation here, I'd never animate it. I add no keyframes to it. What you want to do is add keyframes down here to these values, and I'll show you why. So in this case, I'll use the rotation here, set a keyframe with the stopwatch here, then I'll go over here, and now I'll set a new keyframe. I can either push this diamond to set one, or I can just grab the value and start changing it, and it automatically makes a keyframe. And now I'm going to preview it with the preview button here, and it's on a loop here, so it'll play over and over again. So you can see it changes. Yep, a little smooth rotation there. Now, I'd like you to notice too that the Z rotation just changes it in a flat manner. So it just rotates cleanly around the anchor point, which we talked about earlier. If I was to change the anchor point here, it would rotate around that now. You see how that works? That's why anchor point's so important. I just hit undo with Command Z to put the anchor point back where it was. And the Y rotation here 
makes it move in three dimensions towards the camera. And the X rotation does the same. It just moves it in a different direction. I almost never use those. If you're working in three-dimensional spaces, you certainly may use them. Everything we do is just layers on top of each other to make things seem as though they're in three dimensions. So when we animate, Z rotation is what we almost always use. So back to the difference between X, Y, and Z rotation and orientation. So I've already got this movement here. Preview it. But let's say I want Santa to be facing a different direction. So I want him to be aimed upside down this way. But I still want to keep that same rotation that I did. Now the rotation moves exactly the same. He's just facing in a different direction. He's oriented differently. Now I'm going to hit undo again, Command Z. And in this case, let's say I wanted to try to do this with adjusting Z rotation instead. Well, I'd have to do extra work. I'd have to go to this keyframe and set it. And then I'd have to go over here and set where I wanted it to stop. And this just creates a lot of extra work, and there's really no need for it. This, anytime you can separate, I'm just hitting undo now to get back to where we were. Anytime you can separate your animation into smaller pieces, it makes your life much easier. Because inevitably, you might end up doing something very complicated. And if you have to go back and start changing it, it's very easy to mess up everything you've been doing. When things get very complex, it's the way to go. And it saves time, too. And time is very important when you're animating. So I'm going to delete these because I don't need them. So I'm going to hit select them both with the arrow and then hit delete. And there they go. Now, the last thing I want to show you here is opacity. And this isn't really used for motion, but it's one of the basic transform properties. So I want to just show you how it works. It's very much what it sounds like. It's at 100% here. You can grab it and lower it by pulling to the left and Santa goes away. Or you can bring it up and he comes back. Or maybe you want to leave him at 46 and we'll preview it and he's almost like a ghost. This is something you can use in a lot of ways. You can also just click on this and write in your own value. Maybe I'll do it at 55. So there's a couple ways you can do that. And if you want to bring up opacity with the shortcut, hit T. And it'll bring up opacity. You'd think it would be O for opacity, but it's T. I think it's for transparency. So we will also go back. And I'll show you how to bring up just the rotation and orientation. You hit R. And it just brings up those properties. And since I wasn't selecting the slave profile or selecting anything, then it brought up the properties for everything that is showing right now. So that's it. Well, there you have it, the foundation of animation. Anchor point, position, scale, orientation, and rotation. You can use these to make almost anything. So long from the year 8000.